Welcome back to this last part of the short series on how I use Notion to organize my life. My name is Janosch and in this video I want to show you how I manage resources in my Notion workspace. And as you know by now, resources are a key part of the Para method, which is what I use to build the underlying organizational structure in my workspace. Now, as you might recall, resources are all of the things that you need in your work and personal life um, to fulfill projects. So for example, this might be a tutorial on how you do a certain uh, effect in CSS if you want to design a website, or it might be a certain recipe that you want to cook for your family uh, and all of these different things. And um, there's many, many use cases for this. So I have decided to split up my resources page or my resources database into many different parts. And uh, I want to show you how this works right now. So let's jump right into my Notion dashboard. All right, so now we're in the Notion dashboard and let's go to the resources page. Now, the way that I've set this up is I've created different views in here for all the things that I want to keep in my uh, resource page. So all the different categories of resources that I have. So we have tools and software, which is uh, just a huge list of tools and software that I use on a regular basis that I recommend to others uh, with all the information needed in here. So I have just lots of information in here. The way this separation works is by using properties and filters. So uh, I have this area property, which has all of these different uh, aspects or different kinds of um, resources that I want to manage in here. And then I have one view for all of these tools. So I have one view uh, where all, only the uh, tools or only the resources show up that include tools and software, which is uh, the one you're looking at right now. And now we also have all of these other different views. So let me show you each of these categories and what I include in them. So uh, tools and software, as I said, these are just the tools that I use in my personal and work life, uh, software tools that I uh, enjoy, that I like, that I recommend to others. And I just have this huge database so that I keep all of them in one place and I don't have to remember each one of them um, for each individual purpose. If I uh, forget something, uh, I know it's still in here. And these not only include uh, tools that I have used, but also tools that I want to use or that I just find generally interesting that I might want to use in the future so that I have them in the back of my mind if I ever uh, come across a use case for them. Now I have the name of each one of them. I have the function or pretty much uh, usually this is the description. So what the tool actually does. I have a property that checks if uh, I've already used the tool so I can filter. Uh, for example, I could say filter um, and add a filter, which would say already used is checked. And then it would only show me the tools that I've used before. Um, I can remove this again. Then I also have the area of use. So this is pretty much uh, the topic that it would be used for. Something like WordPress, SEO, local SEO, productivity, uh, banking, and all of these different software aspects or all these different niches and uh, industries where you might want to uh, use a certain software tool. I can also filter for those. So I could add a filter uh, saying I want to only include, let's say areas of use contains, uh, let's say web design. And now I only see the tools. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Uh, now I only see the tools that actually have web design in this uh, category. All right, let's remove this again. And now all of them are back in there. I also have the URL in here. I'll show you how this works uh, later on. Uh, so how I basically add all of those resources in here. And also for some of them, I have the affiliate link, um, which I just put in there because if I ever want to recommend a tool to someone, I just give them the affiliate link um, and then I might even get a bonus, uh, some money or uh, some free months, for example, for a productivity software. That's usually the case. Um, uh, and it's just a nice bonus for me. Next up, we have the uh, further education. So uh, usually this is not called further education, uh, but it's called just yeah, education um, or learning. And this includes 
all of the uh, things that I want to learn about. So when I come across a YouTube video that I want to watch later that uh, includes some uh, or might include some really useful and interesting information. Then I add this into here so that I don't have to watch it right now, which would disrupt my workflow, but I can watch it later and come back to this overview to see all the things that I actually want to watch. Also books that I want to read. So books that I uh, either have already that I want to read or books that I want to purchase in the future uh, because they seem interesting. And this works in a similar way. Uh, I just have a, uh, or I just have less properties in here. Uh, I have a status, so this shows me if I've started uh, reading or watching the resource, uh, or if I haven't. And once I finished reading or watching the resource, I can just add uh, the status of complete. And oops, uh, right now it doesn't uh, do this, but usually uh, the way this works is that the completed status. Uh, items get uh, kind of pushed out of the list so that I don't see them anymore. Um, the way we would do this, I can quickly show you if uh, it's not working anyway, um, is to add a filter where the status, let's quickly look for the status, yeah, where the status is, is not, that's what we're gonna do, <laughs> where the status is not completed, there we go. And now the completed ones actually get filtered out. So if I add another complete to this, how to record the video calls, you see this disappears because all of the completed items kind of get pushed out of the list and don't get shown anymore. Next up, we have the restaurants and bars. Um, and this is just a list of all of the restaurants and bars and cafes uh, that I really enjoyed going to. I plan on using this list um, till the end of my life, hopefully, um, so that I can have uh, different restaurants in all of the cities all over Germany and all over uh, other countries in the world um, that I know that I have been to and that I really enjoyed and um, I've started just recently started this so there's not that many uh, restaurants on the list but it's a uh, really nice project and I uh, I hope I really hope I can still use this list in like 10 to 15 years um, so uh, yeah, this is pretty much uh, self-explanatory as well. There is uh, the name, then there's the type of establishment, so it's either a restaurant, a bar or a cafe. The location, um, so I have bigger cities where I've been to uh, in here. And in Berlin I have the different uh, parts of the city uh, as individual items because uh, it just allows me to further nail down where these uh, shops actually are. So if I'm in one part of the city and I quickly want to look what cafes are in the in the area, I don't have to look at the list of all of the uh, cafes in Berlin because there's too many. Uh, I just see the cafes that are actually in this area in Berlin. Also, of course, we have the URL as well. You can just click on these and then I will get taken to the website of the uh, individual cafe or bar or restaurant. Now, as there are three different types of establishments here, uh, you see we only see the cafes right now because uh, only the ones that contain cafe are shown. So if I remove this, you'll see that the, the restaurants and bars also appear. Um, so just so that you know, if you feel like something's missing, if you don't uh, see the entries that you made, it might be because you've applied a filter that you didn't want to be there. Um, yeah, just letting you know. All right, next up, we have the web design inspiration. And this is in a different view, which is the biggest difference. It's, uh, again, pretty self-explanatory. It's just all of the websites that I find inspiring inside of a gallery view. And you can just see the preview of the website. And uh, so if I'm looking for inspiration for new websites, I can always just come in here and look at all of the different uh, websites that I've collected in here, uh, look through them, look for inspiration and so on. And I uh, constantly add to this list when I find new websites that I find really uh, good looking. Then we have the interesting products and companies list. And this is again, a gallery view. It's just a list of all of the companies and uh, products that I find interesting. It's different to the tools and software in a way because this involves uh, things like physical products and also uh, coding boot camps and all of these different kind of businesses um, that I just find interesting, but they don't belong in the tools and software category 
uh, because they aren't any SaaS tools. Next, we also have companies to work for, and uh, these are just uh, just a couple. I created this view one time, and I haven't been using it too much because right now I'm not really looking for a job. Uh, I don't know if I will have a job at a actual company ever because. Uh, right now I'm a student and I'm also a freelancer, I do online courses, I do web design, so I might not get a job ever, but um, if I will, if I want to in the future, uh, I know companies where I uh, might really want to work, where I think the product is really nice, the work environment seems really nice, and then I can just add them to this list, but nothing too special. Next we have the personal CRM. Um, I unfortunately have to blur out the images in this view because this is personal information, but um, this is just where I keep track of interesting people that I uh, know or that I, that I got to know. For example, if I go to an, an event and I get all these business cards, I don't want to keep a stack of these business cards, so if I ha find contacts to be really interesting, I note them down in this view and I save them online uh, so that I don't forget about them if I might need to get back to them in the future. Now you might be wondering how I add in all of these tools into my workspace uh, or into my resources database without it being lots and lots of work. So let me quickly show you this process. And if you don't know about it, Notion has the Web Clipper Chrome extension and also it works on phones as well. And what that this does is it allows you to uh, kind of save web pages into your Notion uh, database or into Notion pages and databases. Uh, let me quickly show you how this works. So let's just go right out of this dashboard and let's, uh, let's just look for CNBC. Why not look for CNBC? We will just click on any article right here and close these windows and now we just have this let uh, this uh, article on Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Now what we can do using the Notion Web Clipper is we can click on this button right here if you've got the Web Clipper installed and now this menu pops up and it, what it does is it allows you to add in this page, uh, save this page to any of your pages or databases in Notion. So you can click here and look for any database uh, so I could just choose the resources uh, database, which is what I usually use, or look at any other page or database in Notion. And then when you've got this, uh, just click save page and it will appear in this database. Uh, let me show you how this works. So let's save the page to our, um, well, this is not the right workspace. Uh, this is where we got this, uh, this is where we save this. So now this is the right workspace now. Uh, let's add this to the resources page. And I know I typed this wrong, but uh, this is because of the German translation. Um, but yeah, let's save this to this resources page and now open in Notion. You see that we have this added to our resources page. Now we see all these properties which we don't need right now, but what you can see is that the URL is also added into the Notion workspace. So if we click on this again, you'll see this article pops up again. And uh, this is really helpful because you can quickly, while you're on your phone, while you're browsing through a different website, just add pages to Notion and then organize them later, which is exactly what I do. So in this resources page, Let's quickly go back to the overview, to tools and software. What I have is a page for all of the incoming inputs. So uh, it's called the overview, not a sign page. And there you can see our article that we just added in because uh, it doesn't have an area assigned to it right now, uh, which is what we have to do to make it appear in any one of these other categories. And this is where all of the things go that I add into this uh, big database and then maybe like once a week, once every two weeks, I sit down and I organize these into the uh, several different categories that I have. All right, that was a really long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you sat through till the end. If you enjoy this type of content, uh, please consider subscribing to this channel. I will publish lots of more great Notion content. So yeah, please subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, also leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, I'd gladly answer any of your questions. So uh, yeah, just write a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. 
Also, if you want to learn more about Notion, if you want a more in-depth look, I have a four and a half hour long course on Notion that's on Skillshare and on Udemy. I'll leave the link to those in the description as well. So yeah, be sure to check them out and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.